All praise is due to Allah. His bounty and generosity are truly immense. Allah is perfect in every way and He deserves praise that draws us nearer to Him and enables us to be among those whom He will grant ultimate happiness. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He grants His mercy to whomever He wills. I further testify that our leader and prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. He was the seal upon the succession of Allah's prophets and the role model for all people who observe taqwa by fulfilling Allah's commands and avoiding its prohibitions. O oh Allah, grant your continuous commendation and protection to your worshipping servant and messenger Muhammad as well as to his family, companions, and all who continue following their path until the end of this world. Servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah, remember that he sees you at all times, and perform your deeds sincerely for him alone. Immense reward awaits those who perform their deeds sincerely for Allah, seek the correct means to him, protect themselves from his punishment, repent to him, and strive to do what pleases him. Dear Muslims, desiring to do what is correct, being consistent in that, and beseeching Allah for direction and assistance in reaching the utmost extent of it, are all qualities found in any person who constantly returns to Allah, endeavors to comply with His directives, has reverential fear of Him even when alone, and seeks to please Him by doing all that is beloved to Him. Allah directed His servants to Him, encouraged them to seek all they can attain from Him, and take ample provisions as they traverse their path to Him. They are to do that hoping to be admitted to the abode of His favor, aspiring to be granted the rewards He promised them, and yearning to attain the enjoyment that would come from being able to see His noble face in the abode of Jannah, whose expanses are those of the heavens and the earth, and which has been prepared for those who observe taqwa. There are many clear signs of the comprehensiveness of the mercy and grace which Allah grants His obedient servants, as well as the fact that He wants good for them. There are various channels leading to good things which He has directed them to and instructed them to pursue. He did that by sending clear evidences and guidance down to them in His flawless book and by the authentic sunnah of his chosen and beloved messenger, Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. Servants of Allah, there are various gates to goodness which are open at all times throughout the entire year. No month is devoid of having days and nights in which people are able to perform many acts of obedience and righteous deeds which draw them closer to Allah and His rewards. Servants of Allah, a virtuous time of the year has now come to you. It is a time during which a person of Iman someone who has sound beliefs and performs righteous deeds, can renew his diligence in obeying Allah, join one righteous deed to another, and follow one act of goodness with another. That time is the first ten days of the lunar month, the hijjah They are the most virtuous of days in this world, as mentioned in a hadith collected by Al-Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih and Abu Dawood in his Sunan. From Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them. The wording collected by Abu Dawood states that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, There are no days during which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these days. The companions present asked, Messenger of Allah, not even jihad, struggling in Allah's path to uphold his religion? He replied, Not even jihad, except in the case of a man who endangers his own life and property in order to overcome the enemy and does not return with any of those things. The most accurate view held by the scholars, as explained by Ibn Rajab, may Allah have mercy upon him, 
is that these are the days referred to in the statement of Allah, I swear by the time of dawn, and I swear by the first ten nights. The proceeding establishes the lofty rank and tremendous virtue held by these days, as well as the fact that gates to pleasing Allah and attaining His mercy are numerous. Therefore, if a person misses out on entering one of them, there are still others to which he can go. And if a person is unable to perform some deeds, he would not be left unable to perform any deeds at all. Servants of Allah, this provides major incentive for any person of Iman. It urges him to seize the opportunity to draw nearer to his Lord by performing various types of righteous deeds and by hastening to please Allah and attain his forgiveness. The most important deeds by which a servant can draw nearer to his Lord during these days are fulfilling obligations and avoiding prohibitions. These are the foundation of servitude to Allah. Al-Imam al-Bukhari collected a hadith Qudsi in his Sahih from Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, who narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, stated that Allah said, my worshipping servant does not draw nearer to me with anything more beloved to me than the obligations I prescribe for him. After obligations, there are many supererogatory acts of obedience by which one can worship Allah, such as prayer, fasting, charity, reading the Qur'an, and upholding ties of kinship. These are ways in which a person can make himself beloved to Allah, and they were alluded to by Allah's Messenger of Guidance, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, later on in the aforementioned hadith. He said that Allah had stated, And my worshipping servant continues drawing nearer to me with supererogatory deeds, until I love him. When I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, his hand with which he grasps, and his leg with which he walks. If he were to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him. And if he were to seek refuge with me, I would surely grant him refuge. Servants of Allah, worship and servitude to Allah by engaging in dhikr, mentioning Allah with prescribed words of glorification, during these ten days also holds an exceptionally lofty rank. That is because mentioning Allah with the words he prescribed is one of the best and fondest of deeds to Allah, the Almighty and the Most Majestic. This can be found in a hadith with a sahih chain of narration collected by Ahmed at tirmidhi and Ibn Majah from Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him. He narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, and asked the companions, Should I not tell you which of your deeds is best, purest and most productive to your Lord, who owns and controls all things, most effective in enabling you to attain the highest ranks, more rewarding for you than giving gold and silver in ways that please Allah, and even better for you than facing your enemies in battle, such that you strike their necks and they strike your necks? The companions present replied, Please do inform us. He said, it is mention of Allah, the Almighty and Most Majestic. In addition, Muslim collected a hadith from Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, who narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, had said, those who set themselves apart from others by way of a certain deed are the ones who will move farthest ahead on their journey. The companions present asked, Messenger of Allah, what do you mean by those who set themselves apart from others by way of a certain deed? He replied, the men and women who mention Allah much. That is the status of dhikr at all times in general. However, servants of Allah, it holds even more virtue during these ten days, and that is the reason for it being given special mention out of all other acts of worship. And Imam Ahmed collected a hadith in his Musnad from Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with both of them, who narrated that the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, There are no days more magnificent to Allah, and in which righteous deeds are more beloved to him, than these ten days. Therefore strive often during them to say La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. And Imam Ibn Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that for each of a person's limbs there is a form of worship for it to engage in for a specific amount of time, with the exception of dhikr, which is a form of worship engaged in by the heart and tongue and it does not have a time to which it is limited. Allah's servants have been instructed to engage in dhikr of the one whom they worship and love, regardless of what state they are in, whether standing, sitting, or lying down. Dhikr purifies the heart, polishes it, and provides cure for its ailments.
the more engaged a person is in his dhikr of Allah, the more he would love and yearn to meet Allah. When a servant's heart and tongue are both simultaneously engaged in dhikr, he would not be preoccupied by anything else, and Allah would safeguard and suffice him in all ways. Dhikr is the conclusion of all righteous deeds, just as it is their beginning. It is their constant companion, and in fact, their soul. When they are devoid of dhikr, they become like a body devoid of a soul. A worshipping servant, mentioning Allah, engaging in dhikr, is in fact tied to two instances of Allah mentioning the servant. One instance causes the servant to mention Allah and the other causes the servant to be mentioned by Allah. Allah said, therefore, make mention of me. When you do that, I will make mention of you. And the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, stated that Allah had said, when someone mentions me within himself, I mention him within myself. And when someone mentions me in a gathering, I mention him in a gathering that is even better. All righteous deeds during these ten days are desirable, they are beloved to Allah, and they merit the rewards that He has graciously promised. These ten days are not confined to any particular act of worship. Rather, they are an arena for striving to be foremost in performing righteous deeds, whose rewards remain. And people follow various courses in such an arena as they tread their path to Allah. For some people, Acquiring and imparting knowledge of Islam comes at the head of their deeds and path. They spend their time occupied with that, sincerely seeking Allah's face, and they remain diligent in their path of knowledge and imparting it until it leads them to Allah, and it enables them to attain exclusive rewards from Him. Among people, there are others who have dhikr, mentioning Allah, at the head of their deeds and path. They make that the provision they prepare for the hereafter, such that when they fall short in mentioning Allah, they sense that they have lost out on something. Among people, there are others who have prayers at the head of their deeds. And when they fall short in performing them, or a good deal of time passes without engaging in prayers or being prepared for them, such individuals feel a sort of darkness and constriction. Among people, there are others whose path involves extending kindness and doing good for others, such as fulfilling their needs, alleviating their difficulties, providing relief, and giving charity in various ways. Those are channels that are open for such individuals, and by them, they tread their path to their Lord. Among people, there are others whose path is reading the Qur'an, and that fills most of the person's time and comprises the majority of his worship. Among people, there are others whose path is fasting, and when they refrain from fasting for a time, they sense a change in their heart and their circumstances overall. There are others whose path is Hajj and Umrah. There are others whose path is avoiding what distracts them from Allah, remaining sincere in their devotion to Him, remembering that He always sees them, monitoring their own thoughts, and safeguarding their time so that it does not get wasted. There are also others who combine the aforementioned qualities and tread their path to Allah by way of all possible channels. Such individuals make their worship of Allah and servitude to Him their primary focus at all times, and they fulfill those duties in every way they can. Wherever there is an act of worship, you find them among the people involved in it. If that act is attaining or imparting knowledge, you find them among those who attain or impart knowledge. If it is praying, you find them among those devoted to prayer. If it is mentioning Allah, you find them among those engaged in dhikr. If it is extending acts of kindness, you find them among those who do good for others. If it is focusing on their love for Allah and repenting to Him, you find them among those who do so. They engage in every act of worship wherever it might be. And they do whatever they must to be part of it. Such people are the ones who tread their path to their Lord in the fullest sense. Therefore, servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah, make the most of these blessed days, and give them their due right by remaining keen to mention Allah, being grateful to Him, and worshipping Him in the best way. You must also beware of wasting the opportunity and being negligent in striving to attain the tremendous rewards that Allah has promised.
May Allah enable us all to glean benefit from the guidance of his book and the sunnah of his messenger. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. I say this much, I implore Allah the most magnificent and majestic to forgive every sin that has emanated from myself, you, and all who submit to him in Islam. Allah is certainly the continually forgiving and the bestower of mercy. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own souls and from the evil consequences of our actions. If Allah guides someone, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leaves someone to stray, none can guide him. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, without any partner. And I testify that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. May Allah grant commendation and protection to His messenger, as well as to the messenger's family and companions. Servants of Allah, there is a reason behind these ten blessed days having more virtue than other days throughout the year. al hafidh ibn Hajar, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that the reason which appears to be the case is the fact that during the first ten days of the hijjah the major foundational acts of worship come together, those being prayer, fasting, charity, and hajj. And this does not happen at any other time. Additionally, Allah, the most exalted, who is perfect in every way, placed within the people of Iman a longing to behold his sanctified house. However, not every individual is able to behold it every year. As a result, Allah prescribed Hajj as an obligation only once in a person's life, and he made the ten first days of Dhul-Hijjah a virtuous time that is shared by all, whether they have traveled for Hajj or remain in their homelands. If a person is unable to perform Hajj in any given year, he is still able during the first ten days of Dhul-Hijjah, even while in his very own home, to perform righteous deeds that merit rewards even greater than struggling in Allah's path, which itself is more virtuous than Hajj. Hence, anyone whom the ongoing pandemic prevents from having the privilege of being an Arafah to come before Allah should still seize the chance he has, wherever he may be, to remain humble towards Allah, have love for Allah, find solace with Allah, and have correct knowledge about Allah. Anyone prevented from spending the night at the location known as Muzdalifah whose name conveys the meaning of drawing nearer to Allah, should still strive to draw near to his Lord at all times, and his Lord will still reward him for that. Anyone prevented from coming to the Kaaba, fearing the consequences of the pandemic, should present his needs to the Lord of the Kaaba, since his provisions cannot be exhausted, and his hand continues giving throughout each night and day. Furthermore, anyone who wants to draw near to his Lord by offering a sacrifice on the day of sacrifice is to refrain from removing any of his hair or nails from the beginning of the hijjah until the sacrifice is offered. In compliance with the statement of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, when the first ten of the hijjah begin, anyone among you who intends to offer a sacrifice must not remove any of his hair or nails. This was collected by Muslim. Servants of Allah, continue to observe taqwa of Allah and always keep in mind the blessing Allah has bestowed upon you by granting you various virtuous days throughout the year so that you can fill them with the acts of worship which please your Lord, put your heart to peace, purify your souls, and enrich your lives. In conclusion, remember the instruction that Allah gave us in which he said, indeed, Allah grants his commendation to the Prophet, and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O oh Allah, grant your commendation to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you granted your commendation to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim indeed you are most praiseworthy most glorious O Allah grant your blessings to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you granted your blessings to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim indeed you are most praiseworthy most glorious O Allah we implore you to be pleased with your messengers for successors Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman and Ali as well as all of your messengers family companions and those who continue following their path until the day of reckoning. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. Protect the religion you prescribe and defeat its enemies as well as all who oppress others and all who spread corruption. O oh Allah, Lord of all creation, unite the hearts of the people who submit to you in Islam. Consolidate their ranks, make their leaders righteous people, and make their word one in conformity with the truth. O Allah, grant us safety in our lands and make our leaders and authorities individuals who are righteous. Support our leader with the truth and grant him righteous aids. 
guide our leader to successfully do all that you love and are pleased with. O Allah, direct our leader, his deputy, and their brothers to all channels that would produce good for your servants and their lands. O Allah, we ask you for the best outcome in all things. O Allah, we implore you to save us from adversity in this world and from punishment in the hereafter. O Allah, we implore you to rectify for us the affairs of our religion which protect us from displeasing you. Rectify for us the affairs of this world which contain our livelihood. Rectify for us the affairs of the hereafter to which we shall finally return. Make life a source of more good for us and make death a source of rest for us from every evil. O Allah, we implore you to cure our ailing and to have mercy upon our deceased. O Allah, we seek refuge with you against all harms and illnesses. We seek refuge with you from all diseases. O Allah, we implore you to remove from us all diseases and epidemics. O Allah, grant us the best outcome in all things and protect us from disgrace in this world and punishment in the hereafter. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. O Allah, protect us from your enemies and our enemies in whatever way you wish. O Allah, we seek refuge with you against their harms. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. O Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your worshiping servant and messenger Muhammad. And all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.